typically speaking, an addict knows that what they're doing is wrong and that it's hurting them and it's hurting others. Welcome to Jay's Way. Thank you very much for coming to my channel. If you like the content, please hit that like button, comment below, subscribe, and share this with others so that we can help people to learn the things they need to overcome addiction. I've made a video in the past about this topic, what is addiction. I feel that the quality of it is a little less than what I would like to provide for you, so I'm remaking the video. But I'll put a link up here somewhere for you if you want to go back and look at that. Please do. So what is an addiction? An addiction is hiding. That is the simplest answer that I can give you. It is not simple. But if you can bring that into your mind, I believe it can help you to understand addictive behavior very, very well. Hiding from a negative situation or a negative emotion is why you seek out your addictive behavior. You don't want to feel a certain way, so you do something so you feel differently. You get drunk. You get high. You go gamble at the casino and seek that feeling you get from winning. You overeat. You seek that food that really makes you feel better, you watch pornography, whatever that behavior is, it's completely related to your inability or unwillingness to handle the actual emotional issue that's happening at that time. An addiction is a chemical change in your mind. The chemicals that come into play can literally take your ability to make your own decisions from you. An addiction is not a moral issue. It's not about, is this person a good person or a bad person? It has nothing to do with it. An addict is actually doing something to escape that negative emotion that they don't want to do. It's not part of their character. And that is the reason that it can cause pain. Now, I have two quotes that I'd like to share with you to illustrate this. This quote is from Russell M. Nelson, and it's from my 12-step manual. Addiction surrenders later freedom to choose. Through chemical means, one can literally become disconnected from his or her own will. And another one from Boyd K. Packer. Addiction has the capacity to disconnect the human will and nullify moral agency. It can rob one of the power to decide. So this isn't just me explaining to you to make excuses. The chemical change that actually takes place because of addictive behavior is very real. And the action that an individual does to hide hurts them because that's the other thing that an addiction is it's painful it hurts others it hurts you as the addict and the this pain becomes really really hard to manage typically speaking an addict knows that what they're doing is wrong and that it's hurting them and it's hurting others but they can't stop. You see, that's the first step in addiction recovery is to acknowledge that this is bigger than you, that this is something you've tried and you just can't stop it on your own. That hurts. You know you're doing something you don't want to do and you know you're hurting people and you know you can't stop. Anybody can recognize how that would be a challenge. So... Learning how to handle our emotions is the key to overcoming this. And that doesn't just mean learning how to not be mad, not be sad, not be whatever. You also, that is exactly what you need to do, but you also need to learn that it's okay to be sad and just stay there. 
You don't have to run from it. You don't have to hide from it. If you can take yourself to a place where you're in the opposite of emotion, where you, instead of being sad, you're happy, that's fantastic. But it's okay to just be sad. And that emotional regulation can give you the ability to no longer need to seek out that addictive chemical reaction. That is the path to addiction recovery. Learning how to do that is not easy. And for many, many people, it requires almost a lifelong effort. But to give some hope, I want to make it clear that the atonement is powerful enough. And when you use the atonement and you start to rely on that higher power, the Savior, you can gain all of the tools that you need to be free of your addiction. A lot of people will say that an addict is always an addict. I do not agree with that. That is not true because you can gain the emotional resilience, the self-mastery, and all of the other necessary behaviors and knowledge and experience so that you no longer have to hide from your emotions. And when, once you get to that point, you're free from that addictive behavior. Can you go back to it? Of course. Absolutely. Just like anybody else can all of a sudden start drinking when they never did before. But a non-addict has the ability to handle their emotions in negative situations without resulting in the application of that negative addictive behavior. And when you get to that point, you are free from your addiction. You always have to be weary of returning to that easy fix when things get difficult, but you, it can be done. I believe that someone who says you cannot recover from an addiction completely does not understand or really believe in the power of the atonement. You can be healed, you can be saved, and you can be changed. When you start to go through this process of understanding what an addiction is, and then gaining all the tools necessary to overcome it, you are progressing. And progressing is success. Perfection is not what you're trying to do. You are just trying to progress and make your way out of that negative place in your life. And that's what you're trying to do. Abstinence from that negative behavior, that's not the goal. And I've made a video about this before. Please check that out. But there's a big difference between abstinence and real recovery. I hope that this has been helpful to you. I know that the Savior wants us to have peace, love, and joy in our lives. And overcoming our addiction can bring that to us. That's the Savior's way. And that's Jay's way.